Iran and Russia have started partnership to design and manufacture unmanned aerial vehicles, which can be exported to Russia later on, an Iranian aviation official said on Saturday. We have started a few joint works with Russia, including cooperation on designing certain drones which we can export to Russia," Dolkram Benadarafi, head of Iran Aviation Industries Organization, told reporters on the sidelines of the International Aviation and Space Salon Max, in Russia. Since Iran is among top drone manufacturers and designers in the world, Russia is eager to cooperate with us in this area," Benadarafi said, while stressing that not all drone requests by Russia could be granted. In September 2016, Iran's armed forces chief said Russia had sought Iran's technology to manufacture long-range drones, which he said could target positions with a one-square-meter cross-section. Over the past years, Iran has shown off a number of combat and reconnaissance drones. It unveiled its first domestically built drone bomber, Terror, in 2010 with a range of 1,000 kilometers and the capability to carry two 250-pound bombs or a precision bomb of 500 pounds. Since then, Iran has also introduced Seget, Ababal, Fatros, Hazem, Mohajer, Sarah, Shad 129, and Yasser. Fatros can fly at an altitude of 25,000 feet and has a flight time of 16 to 30 hours, while Mohajer can fly up to 3,000 kilometers. In June, the U.S. Army said it had shot down an armed Iran-made drone in southeastern Syria. Also Iran aired footage from a drone in the Syrian battlefield as its missiles hit Islamic State targets. In addition to its indigenous know-how, Iran has used reverse engineering to upgrade its drone fleet. In December 2011, Iran captured a US RQ-170 Sentinel reconnaissance drone in eastern Iran that had been reported lost by US forces in neighboring Afghanistan. Iran said the advanced drone was forced down nearly intact in an electronic attack that overrode flight systems. Five years later, the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps displayed a new attack drone called the Seget or Thunderbolt, saying it was a replica of the captured RQ-170. Reacting to the unveiling, then-Pentagon spokesman Colonel Steve Warren said, there is no way it matches American technology. There were reports on Russia and China having immediately asked Iran for permission to inspect the drone. Achieving the technology may be behind Russia's efforts to seek closer drone cooperation with Iran. One week after the successful capturing, Iran sent a senior official to Moscow to meet Russian officials, what Iranian media outlets linked to Russia's efforts to inspect the super-secret CIA stealth drone. When Russia unveiled its Orion-E drone at the International Aviation and Space Salon Max 2017, near Moscow this summer, it bore a striking resemblance to an Iranian-shot unmanned aerial vehicle, UAV, already flying. Orion and Shad look very much alike, said Samuel Bendit, an associate research analyst at the Center for Naval Analyzes International Affairs Group, speaking Thursday at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, CSIS, in Washington, D.C. The aviation conference where the Orion drone debuted was designed in part to bring together Russian officials and potential foreign business partners. Russia has some operational drones already and is developing multiple unmanned systems for land, sky, and sea, but many are at a relatively early stage, Bendit said. The country is focused on improvements in drone intelligence, speed, flight time, and the ability to gather drones in swarms. Working with foreign countries has been part of Russia's strategy to catch up to advanced drone programs in the United States and China. 
Russia has cooperated with Israel, for example, as a strategic play to learn fast, Bendit said. Russia saw a distinct advantage in very quickly acquiring a system and learning from its operations, and obviously Israelis knew that that was going to happen, he said. The Russians' acquisition process is still trying to catch up with technology developments, according to Bendit. They're going from 0 to 106 seconds when it comes to UAVs, he said. The United States, meanwhile, has had a near monopoly on unmanned military systems over the past quarter century, Bendit said. Russia has made internal changes to foster the development of drones, Bendit said. Until a few years ago, Russia had no official or coordinated policy on unmanned military systems, he said. This has now changed. Still, internal hurdles include skimmed off money within programs, Olga Oliker, a senior advisor and director of the Russia and Eurasia program at CSIS, said at the CSIS event. The Russian defense industry delivers slowly and over budget just like every other defense industry, she said. There's a lot of room for inefficiency, and the inefficiency happens. There is no official confirmation of collaboration between Russia and Iran on the Orion drone, Bendit cautioned, though the two countries cooperate already in the war in Syria. Iranians travel to Moscow on a regular basis, he said, perhaps they shared. Developing drones based on foreign designs can be faster than developing the technology from scratch, Oliker said. If you're trying to catch up, you can use off-the-shelf stuff, you can emulate, you can reverse engineer, she said. Russia is also making progress in land-based unmanned technology efforts, including a humanoid robot that can hold and shoot guns. That project helps reveal attitude differences between the United States and Russia toward military technology, according to Oliker. Terminators don't seem like a good idea from here in the United States, she said. In the United States you get a certain amount of terror that the robots are coming, she said. In Russia, there's this notion that this can be controlled.